Previously on Hebrew Roots. Man of God, please, before you continue, I want to find out the conscience. Where is it? I thought the conscience was in the heart. No. Or now, part of the heart. Le, le, <laughs> part and in the heart. Let me yes. clarify this whole issue. Yes, the difference. Now, when you the speak of the yes. conscience, the yes. conscience is an organ of the spirit. Okay. And actually, it is the guiding seat of the spirit and soul's agreement. When the spirit and the soul agree on a matter, then the conscience is opened. When your spirit and your soul agree on a matter, then the conscience is opened as an organ of the spirit. So the conscience is just supposed to excuse and accuse. That is its work. It allows you to do something or it accuses you on something. But it does not give you the power to do anything. And this was the problem God realized with the Mosaic order. So he decided that he was going to write his laws in the heart. But that was not all the plan of God. What then is the heart? The heart is simply the spirit and the soul coming together. Not only agreeing. It is the oneness of the spirit and the soul that produces the heart. So whenever you speak of the heart, you're speaking of the spirit and the soul as one entity. But you know what God did? Remember that the conscience accuses and excuses. Now, this conscience did not have life within it. Because what it lacked was to give man the ability to do. It was only accusing and excusing. So God said, I will write my laws in their hearts. And a new spirit, which is the spirit of life, will I place within them. So God did two things in the new creation. He transported the testimonies from the conscience into the heart. And now placed his spirit to give man the ability to fulfill the law. And that was what Christ did. And Christ was our first example. And he fulfilled this by love. So it is in love that we find the expression to be able to do. Because there is no fault in love. There is no fear in love. Love fulfills all the law. From the moral law to the ceremonial law. All the laws from covenants to testimonies. Love in the heart. And who is this love? God is love. So when this presence of God is infused in a man, he wrote the law and he is the one who knows the demands of the law. So he comes into the man to make him to be able to fulfill it. So in the Old Testament, where we talk about the Mosaic law, the ability to fulfill the demand of God was not given to a man. So, as in food. Okay. So men were now living according to their natural strength. That is how come the scripture says that the law was given to condemn. To condemn. To, to, to the show law, the weakness in a man. Exactly. It's so the law was to reveal the evidence that you couldn't man do it. had not the capacity to fulfill, to fulfill the, the demands, demands of God. God. So the law revealed man's weaknesses. So we see that the law came into effect to condemn exactly. in a sense that to provide evidence, not to God, Mm-mm, but to, to us, ourselves, yes. that we have not in us the, the ability to execute the demands of the law yes. without God. Yes. Any social structure is best understood through its heritage and culture. Since the Bible was written from Hebrew traditions and antiquities, it should be considered from a Hebraic perspective. Unfortunately, many believers approach biblical Hebrew concepts with a Western mindset. This is why developing a Hebraic lens as we go through the scriptures cannot be downplayed. Welcome to Hebrew Roots with Pastor Obed or Ben Adai. So now, whenever you say that the law came to condemn, people begin to think of it as perishing. But no, it was to reveal so that you became the judge of your own self. 
you admitted your weaknesses, your inabilities to fulfill all the beautiful demands that God had then laid on you. Cry out to God. Then you cry out and to then God. Christ will come and then Christ in. comes into your and life. Provides the capacity, the ability, and the, the capacity spirit. to fulfill it. In your heart, in your heart, the law of God is inscribed, exactly. and power is granted you to exactly. execute the exactly. demands of God. Exactly. So that is the reason why we believe in the in the new life that we have the testimonies to fulfill the covenant by reason of the Spirit of God who is within us. Within us. So if you got that, then you realize that we've now fulfilled. Because if it is fulfilled in us, Glory so that within God. us, Hallelujah. the demands of the law is fulfilled. Hallelujah. This is, this is exciting. This is where the scripture says that exactly. we are not under that the, law. the law. Yes. That is the law that Christ has fulfilled yes. in us. Yes. And that means that So that the righteous requirements of the law has should be fulfilled within us. us. It's satisfied. It is satisfied. When Christ did it and yes. we're Birth again. And you see, when Christ did it, this is what happened. Christ did it so that in He coming to live within us, He would have fulfilled it already. So in doing it again by us, it's something that He had done. The, the law of Moses was requiring somebody who was going to fulfill all the law without breaking it. And Christ was the one in the whole of the universe of God who could do it. And when God got that Christ to do it, He said, now go and live in my people and make them be able hallelujah, to do it because hallelujah, you have hallelujah, fulfilled it. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Christ in you, the law fulfilled. Yes. The law fulfilled completely in the person of, of Christ, Christ in, you. in you. Audience, uh, this is as exciting as it gets. We have now been able to distinguish, actually define the law, what yes. law is. We've seen the framework of the law. And then we have also been able to separate the law that was given under the mosaic dispensation. And how come Christ Jesus, the Lord, fulfilled it? And when we are born again, that fulfillment is in us. Yes. The law, the righteous requirements of the law are then fulfilled in us. Yes. So the New Testament has got its own law. Yes. And the law has this framework as we have seen it already. So that law, so in the New Testament, we still have the covenant. The covenant. And then we have the testimony. And the testimony. And then under the covenant, yes. we have the judgment, the statutes, the statutes, the statutes and the, the commandments. The commandments yes. Also under it. Yes. So, a man of God, God bless you, Pastor Beth. I yes. think that this is exciting. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm now appreciating why. A law is done with and still I'm not under the law, the Mosaic law, yet in Christ you are I'm still, still under, under a law, a law. Yes, which is the law of law. grace. If, which so, is the law of grace. So yeah. now, to carry on, this is the reason why the word of God says that God is at work in us, both to will and, and to, to do, do of his own good pleasure. Good pleasure. Glory to it God. never happened before. Hallelujah. The only time it happened fully was in Christ. In Christ. So, when we come under the covenants, where we spoke of the ceremonial laws, the civil laws, and then we spoke of the civic or the judgments, the civil, the civic, and then the ceremonial laws, we realized that right in the Garden of Eden, there were commandments that were given to yes. Adam and Eve. Yes. The Bible says that God said, you are free to eat everything, but then, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. That was the law that was given to Adam. Yeah. Now, apart from that, God came in the cool of the day. So we see God defining the diet here. The diet here. Okay. Like we did in the previous yes. um, um, episode. But then we also realized that in the cool of the day, which was the windy moments of the day, which in the Hebrew speaks of the evening sacrifice, the Bible says that God came into the garden looking for Adam. Adam was not at post. He surely was supposed to tend the garden and he was supposed to worship in the garden. Yes. And we know that the garden was a temple in which Adam had been placed and he was a priest. And we see that he had stones, he had um, um, gems, and he had all 
manner of artifacts for worship in the Garden of Eden. But when God came, Adam was not at post fulfilling the ceremonial law. Because the ceremonial law covers the matters of worship and matters of your relationship with God. The civic law covered the matters of how you relate with your fellow man. Then the moral law covered matters of how you related with yourself within yourself. So where we are able to place these things in their right perspective, we know that in the New Testament, we are supposed to fulfill the ceremonial law. How? By fellowship in the spirit. We are supposed to offer up thanksgiving to God. The Bible says they are the fruit of our lips. They are the sacrifices of thanksgiving. We are supposed to bring offerings to God. Yeah. We are supposed to come to church with our offerings, with free will offerings. These are all matters of the law. We are supposed to come under the laws of our nations. We are supposed to pray for kings and those in authority. For we know that they do not have the sword in vain. We are supposed to have a witness to the people who live in our communities. Talking about the civil law. We are supposed to ensure that we work. If we don't work, Peter says you should not eat. These are all laws in the New Testament. But then we have liberty and ability by the Spirit of God to fulfill each of them. Hallelujah. And that is how come we begin to appreciate how, why Paul said that we should keep the feast. Because the feast are ceremonial laws. But Paul wrote to the church of Corinth and told them to keep the traditions. They should keep the paradoxes. They should keep the feast. So if somebody just wakes up without understanding our Hebrew roots and how mm. that all of these things originate from the heavens and God in having these originations and demands from us has come to live in us to be able to fulfill them and write himself up and say that I have no law and I'm just going to live anyhow. The person really does not understand his new life in Christ. This is Hebrew Roots. We'll be right back. God bless you. Pastor Obed, always a blessing. Wisdom. A subject that has befuddled many a believer and remains a mystery to most. Some have said it is the proper application of knowledge. Others have defined it as beautiful cascading and articulation of words. But did you know that wisdom is not learned in the schools of this world and that a believer must never ask for wisdom? Introducing a treasure that would revolutionize this generation and the next. The Seven Pillars of Wisdom, the Hidden Elixir of Life. A riveting book written by Pastor Obedo Bing Ade. In this book, you would come under the inspiration of the Holy Rock of God as the man of God, Pastor Obed, unlocks this mystery, which is wisdom. As you flip each page of this book, you will be built up into a glorious edifice, expressive in works and power. Order a copy of this book now, available in all our bookshops. To place an order, please call us on plus 233-20-910-5993. Or on plus two three three five five seven nine two six four nine eight. You can also get the ebook on Amazon's Kindle app or visit www.christgospelpolitan.org for more information. Shalom. Pastor Obed, always a blessing.